So here's an unusual one for you and an experiment um, that I've been doing for years and years. Um, most of you might be familiar with this. Um, we're going to look at what happens when we drop um, denser objects in a tube of glycerol. Um, most of this I can explain, but I'm going to try and show an experiment at the end that I don't have a really good explanation for. And I'm wondering perhaps if um, you guys in the comments can perhaps let me know what you think's happening. So let's have a closer look at this um, and I'll need to move the camera to do that. So let's have a look at this tube of glycerol. So what we've got is Perspex tube here and the liquid in it is a sort of thick sticky solution. I'm just trying a bit here. Mm. Yummy. Mm, it's nice, really sweet and sugary. Um, probably not meant to do that, but never mind. And um, what I've got is a long, tall Perspex tube um, with the glycerol in. Um, the longer the better, if you can. Um, there's an air gap right at the top, uh, but that air gap um, is not really part of the experiment that we're gonna do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, some ball bearings out of the tray and drop them in and see how they fall. That's the first bit of the experiment. OK, let's see what happens when we drop some ball bearings of different sizes into this. That's the experiment that most of you might have seen, but it's, it's always good fun. Um, used to demonstrate the effects, the physics on parachuting and terminal velocity. Drop a uh, fairly large one in and see what happens. And you can see it sort of travelling downwards. I'll do, I'll do um, a larger one. And that takes quite a bit longer to pass down. I'll, I'll get in a bit closer with the camera in a minute. Um, the ones that are worth watching, the ones that feel a lot of drag for their mass, um, in other words, and the weight acting on them, are the very, very small ball bearings. So I'll drop that one in. You might see that go, and I'll drop some smaller ones in. Um, and the larger one actually passes them. So it's a fun experiment, this. Um, What's interesting is if you do it with um, two ball bearings that are about the same size and you drop one it reaches its terminal velocity and you drop the second and it reaches its terminal velocity and um, that happened very quickly so let's try it with some uh, smaller ones. There's one and there's another one and I think what I'm going to do is pick up the camera for this um, because if I drop these in what will happen is one of them will go in the next one will go in and because they're both at their terminal velocity they both should fall with an equal gap between them but what I also ask my students from time to time is what do they think would happen if I drop Mickey Mouse in there in other words um, a wing nut and this is quite unusual if we drop it in at an angle it actually sorts itself out straightens itself out and goes down ears upwards which I always think is rather fun so, of course, that experiment begs the question, what happens if you drop a coin off a tall building? Um, and most of you know it will feel quite a lot of drag and will reach its terminal velocity fairly quickly. Um, so it won't come crashing down like I used to think as a kid and cause havoc below or um, put a great crack on in the pavement. Not something you should be doing, of course, um, which is why we have this piece of apparatus to demonstrate it. But the bit that's probably counterintuitive is what if you put the coin on its edge and let go? So let's try that one. Um, it's somewhat similar to dropping a plate into water or what have you. And um, it always surprises people that it goes down absolutely flat. There it goes. And it's reached its terminal velocity. So it's covering an equal amount of distance in each unit of time. It's quite fun that, feels an awful lot of drag. But what we'll do next is we'll do a few experiments with the air pocket in there and see what happens when we mess around with the bubbles. OK, let's have a bit more of a play with this. So once you've finished dropping the balls in it, the students usually ask you to do something else. And don't forget that air bubble that's at the top, because that's a bit of fun. Remember, it's less dense um, than the glycerol in here. So um, what I'll do is I'll take it and invert it and just watch what the bubble does. It's always quite fun, that, watching the bubble rising to the top. I'll do it again, but this time I'll hold it a bit closer so you can see the bubble going past tells you something about the viscosity of the fluid. Uh, what's more interesting as well is that the bubble actually isn't the same shape top and bottom, but it changes its shape um, depending on what the pressures are, either on top of the dome part of it or the underneath of the bubble. Um, but there's still more you can do with this. And um, what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to lie it down on the desk and have it flat. And it was one of my students who pointed out to me that um, if you do that, it sort of acts as a kind of spirit level with the bubble moving up and down, which I thought was, um, you know, well observed. Um, but I'm going to move the camera and show you something rather different, which I've really struggled to explain, and I'm not sure I've got a solution to it. 
Okay, so I'm covered in glycerol. Just trying to get rid of as much as that as possible. It's, uh, messing around with this thing gets all over your fingers. Got to be pretty certain that the bungs don't come out of either end or you really are going to make a mess. But it is this bit that really got me thinking. Don't forget about that air bubble in there. And uh, I was wondering what would happen if we actually rolled it along the desk towards you and away from you to what would happen to the bubble. Well, surely the bubble would just roll with it. Um, but it's actually rather odd, this. I'm not sure you expected that to happen, and neither did I. You get the bubble breaking up into lots of much smaller bubbles, and then when we stop accelerating it, the bubbles coalesce. And I'll bring the camera over, um, give it a bit more of a roll. So you can see that the single bubble's broken up into lots of smaller ones, and then when I stop, the bubbles all coalesce. It always remi it reminds me a little bit of um, biology and how um, plant cells actually join together. I would think you could model this by the same forces. But the bit that really struck me as very odd, let's get the main bubble back again, so we'll break those forces between the other, the smaller bubbles, is it just seems so counterintuitive that when you roll it and accelerate it, you end up with all these lovely little tiny bubbles which move together once you let it go. So pretty unusual experiment this and uh, not what I expected at all but a great deal of fun and my students really enjoy it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I can explain easily what happens on here with the uh, items at the bottom, terminal velocity, drag, Stokes law, all that sort of business. Um, but the bit with the uh, rotating system with the bubbles breaking up um, open to comments on that one because I'm not really sure what's happening and I wonder what environments um, that might happen in real situations and whether it's a serious problem for cavitation pumping liquids I've absolutely no idea um, I found it out completely by accident um, and it's intrigued me ever since hope you enjoyed that I'll do another one soon